Jamel, take us back to the arrest and what happened. Yeah, 2005, my son was just born. His mom was coming over um, for me to meet him for the first time. I wanted to go to the store to get some milk and some other little goodies so I wouldn't have to leave. Um, so I end up getting a ride with a family friend. We get over there to the store. I get in there, I get my stuff. I come out the store and boom, Andrew Collins is right there approaching me talking about where's the dope. And I'm like, what dope? So um, he searched me again and was like, where's the dope? I'm like, what dope? I don't have any dope. And at that time, I stood by the, the mark car and he walked towards the van, I mean, the truck that I was in. And when he came back this time, he wanted to search me again. And I'm like, at this time, I'm mad. I'm all right. Um, I unbuckled my pants and pulled down my pants and underwear, raised up my shirt and was like, I don't have any dope. And from that point, I went to jail and never got to see my son and sentenced to 10 years in federal prison. Yep. And Andrew, why, why, why did you arrest your male? Yeah, so Steve, at that point in my career, uh, I was pretty young and, and I noticed that when I would uh, handle narcotics investigations, when I would get a big bust, uh, I would get a lot of attention and my head started to grow and I started uh, to do little things that led to bigger things that led to, by the end of my career, full-blown corruption. So on that day, I had heard, I got a tip that there was going to be drugs delivered to that location. When I got there, there was one gentleman there and then Jamel came out and I wasn't sure what Jamel's part was with it. But I felt like the, the, the gap that was there in the story was my job to fill for justice to be served. So we found an ounce of crack in the car, and I just basically made up the story that Jamel had to have known because it was his drugs. So I, I wrote the story as, uh, so if any reader would listen or read, they would say, well, yeah, it was his dope. Okay, so Andrew, did, did, how, how did this truth catch up? How do, how do we get here? Cause... Right, yeah, so... That was 2005. By 2008, uh, these little steps towards corruption became I was a full-blown corrupt cop. And I ended up getting caught with crack, heroin, and marijuana in my office, and then the feds got involved. And uh, so I shut down immediately because I, I didn't want to be prosecuted. But the longer I was away from police work, the more I wasn't just sorry that I got caught, but I was sorry for what I had done to people because this wasn't who I was. It was who I allowed myself to become. So um, just through uh, prayer and what God was doing in my life, I, uh, I, said, I went to the feds and I said, I want to tell you the truth. I want to own up to everything. So we sat down and we started picking through these pieces uh, of bad reports that I had done because it wasn't just Jamel. So by the end of that, over 50 to 60 cases were overturned. And then I pled guilty in January of 2009. I was looking at 22 years in prison. I ended up only doing 18 months by the grace of God. And uh, a week after I pled guilty, Jamel was released from prison. Jamel, what was it like for you sitting in prison knowing that you were framed? It was a rough time for me. Um, I became very angry, a bitter person, was unapproachable. A conversation couldn't happen unless we were fighting. So I'm, in, I'm here and I'm like, I don't want to be here. I got, I got to do something else to make it home to ultimately raise my son or to even see him. Because the way I'm going now, um, I probably would be here forever. So I got into, I, I was in my room one day, Steve, and it was a Bible on the table. I grabbed the Bible, looked at it, I'm reading it. Um, then I'm not reading it. It's like a song kept playing in my head that you can't get out. And it was just, let it go, let it go, let it go. And I wouldn't at first, you know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to hold that. And then when I let it go, man, man, some good things happen. Prayer definitely does change things. When I let it go, God, um, that week later, I was released from federal prison. A week later, you were released? Yes. So you ended up doing four years. Four years. Yes. 